I have been falling back in love with live streaming. It's something that I used to enjoy quite a bit. I got some of my real momentum going on YouTube back in the day by just live streaming my university homework and some people happened to notice and we hung out and it became one of my favorite things to do. I've hosted giveaway tournaments sponsored by companies even when I had very small YouTube channels. In spring 2017 when I quit my job at my YouTube MCN I ended up just streaming full time for a few months and made it to Twitch affiliate and I'm now as I've mentioned a bajillion times, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing about building multiple live streaming setups so I can get back to it, so I can keep streaming our PC builds, which did really well last year, and do some game streaming again, because I have fun with that and need to make myself play more games and play some retro games and do more live streaming. But there's still a wall that I'm hitting that even I can't work around that affects a lot of people and it's something that actually caused me to quit streaming when I did make affiliate on Twitch back in 2017. There's actually two issues that I believe are Windows 10 specific, or at least Windows specific, but I believe they're pseudo specific to Windows 10's updates that heavily affect content creators. One affects live streaming performance primarily, and the other affects um, actual like content creation performance. And I'm going to talk about both of those here because they have been just driving me mad. So if you've tried live streaming with Streamlabs OBS or OBS or have looked into threads of people looking for support for live streaming, you may have noticed an issue involving a situation where your computer seems to be running the game fine and then you open up OBS and OBS can't actually run very well. It doesn't matter if you're encoding or not, the actual OBS like frame rate of the rendering and compositing of your scene is below your target 60 or 30 FPS, or it's fluctuating all over the place. And this may show as frames skipped or dropped due to rendering lag instead of encoding lag, or maybe it won't say anything at all and you just have a really time, really high time to encode or time to render frames and your frame rate's just all over the place. This is a big issue. And I spent, I guess, two years now blaming different people, and it was only within the past few months that I've really gotten more certain confirmation that I can blame a specific party involved, and unfortunately that is the operating system itself. And it's, oh. I said when I tweeted asking if people wanted this video that I would try not to make it super ranty, but I hit the microphone. It's going to be hard. So this particular issue has to do with your GPU usage, your graphics card usage by the game, and how that relates to OBS Studio. OBS and OBS Studio, the big thing that made them kind of revolutionary or a big deal in terms of performance and what you could do with it when it was originally launched and how it stands out from the crowd, is it does all of your scene compositing and rendering. That is overlaying your different elements, your webcam here, your overlays, your gameplay, all of that into your video frame on the graphics card itself because typically you have enough graphics card headroom, resource headroom, for it to do all the compositing and rendering there, that way you're not overtaxing your CPU and your CPU can focus on encoding or whatever else you're doing on your machine. Typically this is great, it's fantastic, it's what makes OBS as wonderful as it is on top of being free and open source and all the other functionality they've baked in since the original OBS beta launch. The problem is, when you end up in situations where you're doing high frame rate gaming or high resolution gaming or just a game that is not super optimized and is thus very demanding on your graphics card, OBS doesn't have a whole lot of room to work with, and Windows doesn't want to let it kind of take what it needs. So, a specific example that I'm running into right now is with Apex Legends. Apologies for the cat bell in the background, you're probably used to that by now. Apex Legends is the new free-to-play BR game from Respawn uh, and EA, and it's great, and for the most part, it seems to run great on my system, but in doing so, it is constantly using pretty much 100% of my graphics card, like 80 to 100% all the time. Now, this is a system with an Intel Core i7-8700K and an NVIDIA RTX 2080. We're talking very high-end hardware. Very high-end. So, in using that much of the hardware, when I open up OBS Studio, before I ever click on anything, even if it just loads up a scene with my face and alerts, OBS is running at like 20 FPS or 40 FPS or just constantly fluctuating between 20 to 54 FPS all over the place and will not maintain a steady frame per second and the time to render each frame is double to triple digit milliseconds because it just can't keep up. And if you look into your resource usage, this is because 
you have the game sitting there eating up 80 to 90 percent to 100 percent of my graphics card power and there's no headroom for obs to actually operate and this doesn't matter what i use to encode it doesn't matter if i have x264 selected or nv ink selected or quick sync though the encoders aren't even being used yet this is just obs existing and trying to function to be able to record it can't handle it this is because and as again, I don't have 100% confirmation on this, but I'm fairly certain this is due to how Windows 10 allocates graphics card resources. They no longer, or just don't anymore, and this is more noticeable of a problem these days, they do not allow other applications other than like your primary dominated application that is pulling most of the GPU usage to say, hey, save some for me, or hey, let me pull from this. Whereas if you're running things threaded on a multi-threaded processor, you know, different programs can bounce around to different threads and they can compete with each other for resources so they both slow down but they're both still running. Or you can even manually set CPU affinity so you can say this program only uses these threads, this program only uses these threads, and it all runs hunky-dory. With graphics cards, you don't really have individual threads you can manage and there is no management capabilities built into the operating system or your graphics card drivers at all whatsoever. So that means when OBS is trying to do this, there's no way for it to manage its resources. I say this is Windows 10 specific because I believe when I was first really digging into this, someone else did some testing and this is already hearsay and there's a million variables that could go into it and I do not have the time or resources to set up exact setup per setup to compare, but I believe they went between Windows 10 and Windows 7 and they did not have these issues on Windows 7 and the same people who upgraded from 7 or 8 to 10 didn't have these issues before and suddenly are now. Now, plenty of other people have never had this issue or suddenly they have this issue this week and they didn't have it before, but I specifically encountered it in spring 2017. And I remember hitting a specific wall around April of 2017. This was right after I got Twitch affiliate where suddenly I was no longer able to do this. Now I was playing games at 4K and the specific games that I ran into issue with was Overwatch at Ultra. I didn't realize the Ultra setting specifically was the problem, but toning that down did actually help the issues. PUBG at all, and Rainbow Six Siege at all. Both of those games just demanded so many resources that I could maybe drop down PUBG to like 1440p and maybe get away with it, but overall, I was unable to stream those games, and I kept running into a wall of performance, and I would leave giant, just nasty threads on the OBS forums, really mad that this is an issue, that no one could help me figure it out. I'm By that point, I was probably on... Or no, I I don't think I was on my i9 yet, but I was on a 6900K and a 1080Ti, and eventually I was on the i9-7980XE and a 1080Ti. Like, I was on the best of the best hardware, and this was still happening. And I'm like, what in the hell? How is this acceptable? Who? What is going on? So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, OBS had to have made a change. OBS made a change. What did they do? They broke it. They broke it. OBS didn't really make a change in that time period. They didn't break it. I, I also ran into an issue at the same time, which made, at the exact same time, which made me think, or contributed to the idea that it's a Windows issue, that I was not able to record Adobe Premiere anymore. I was doing editing live streams, and suddenly Adobe released an update that changed how they integrated with CUDA and the graphics card, and I could no longer use Envy Ink while I had Premiere open. It just, OBS didn't have access to the encoder anymore. I was like, all right, Adobe messed something up too. And then I was like, all right, well, oh, Adobe wouldn't affect my live streaming of games, so maybe it's a, an issue of Windows 10? I don't know. But then OBS released an update where they upgraded FFmpeg versions and that got resolved. But I still was unable to stream Adobe Premiere because playing back video files, especially as I started moving into higher fidelity 4K footage, it was using up too much of my GPU. And thus OBS couldn't composite and render. And it was a cycle. And so I was like, all right, it's not OBS anymore. Then I started blaming NVIDIA. I was like, all right, NVIDIA, what's up with your drivers? What's going on? At the time, I did not have any contact or like person-to-person -person relationship with NVIDIA, so I was just like, NVIDIA drivers are breaking stuff, they suck, I can't do this, maybe there was a driver update at that time, really freaking stinks. But, fast forward to 2019 at this point, and I can say with near certainty that this is pretty much an issue with Windows 10 and the allocation bug, and in fact, my contacts with NVIDIA have basically confirmed that, and that they can theoretically do some stuff to help alleviate that, but they shouldn't have to. This is a Windows 10 issue, and it affects AMD graphics cards and even iGPUs as well. So, this is an issue with Windows's GPU allocation, and Windows needs to fix it. And at the moment, they're basically saying, working as intended. Which, if they, if they never want anybody to live stream, I guess so. But it's not working as everyone else intends. So, 
This is a big issue that if you run into this kind of issue with OBS, here's the context of why it's happening. Now, there's a couple things you can do to try to alleviate this. You can go to your Windows 10 settings on 1809, or you have to do a registry hack on older versions of Windows to disable game mode, but you should be doing that if you're streaming anyway. You can go into manually the app compatibility properties and disable full screen optimizations. That can help a little bit because that full screen optimizations is kind of representative of what's happening here. But this happens even in windowed mode or even in borderless windowed mode. Uh, specifically with Apex Legends, I dropped it to 1080p, low settings, windowed, and it was still doing it. Now, I believe if I drop it to 60 hertz instead of targeting 120 hertz, I might have better results, but I still don't expect it to actually run properly. And then you can set OBS's process priority to high or whatever, but that doesn't affect GPU usage. And so there is no exact fix if you're encountering this issue. So there's some there's some steps, you know, lowering your game resolution, lowering your game settings, and the things I just listed that you can do to try to alleviate it, because basically all you're trying to do is lower your GPU usage of the game and keep knocking it down, and hopefully you reach a point where OBS has enough room to run. But that doesn't guarantee a fix. And again, in situations where I want to live stream freaking me video editing, which I did a lot and turned out they were really good streams, I just can't do that anymore because you can't just like turn down those settings. The other issue with this kind of setup is the workaround is just having a separate PC with a capture card, not even NDI, because that's the thing with my gaming PC stuff. Like if I just couldn't encode on my gaming PC, then I'd have my OBS layout up and send it over NDI over to my main PC, which has an i9 and I'd encode there and all would be great. The problem is OBS itself can't run. So since OBS itself can't run, I can't send an NDI signal over to another computer because that requires OBS to use. And I could try using the NDI app itself, that the little desktop scan line converter or scan converter thing, but that is very limited on resolution and frame rate and won't pull in my webcams and my <laughs> capture cards and all of that. It'll just pull in my main desktop feed or a single device that I choose. And so I'm sitting here grabbing capture cards and screwdrivers and long HDMI cables thinking I'm going to run everything to my main PC and it's going to be fine. I'm going to switch to a two PC setup. The problem being that I also have a bunch of webcams and capture cards and console gaming all run through my gaming computer because that's supposed to be my main streaming setup that I can't all just move to this computer and have it work. So I am stuck where I can only stream certain games from this or at all and I, can't, I just can't stream games that aren't cooperating. And this is literally the kind of thing that burned me out on streaming and made me stop streaming when I was streaming full time and made affiliate. And that is just infuriating and very disappointing. So if anyone has any contact or reach within Microsoft or Windows, the Windows team specifically or the Windows graphics team specifically, please try to push them to fix this. I know there's already bug reports submitted. I know there's already discussions happening. Please make this a priority. It's a real big deal. The second issue that content creators might face and that I have specifically been trying to document and face myself is with regards, again, to graphics cards, but with how Windows handles VRAM allocation. This is different than GPU load and will only be encountered by certain people, namely people editing 4K video in programs like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, and especially if you're using any high-end plugins. Now, a lot of people have said that they never encounter this whatsoever, and if you don't, count yourself lucky. However, I edit 4K and 4K 60 FPS video on a daily basis, multiple times every day, and it's basically to the point where every single project I edit at least once, if not many times, during the editing and or rendering process of my videos, the entire program, be it Resolve or Premiere, will completely crash to the desktop or hang or crash the GPU driver itself because it maxes out my VRAM. And keep in mind, I'm on a 1080 Ti with 11 gigs of VRAM. That's a lot of freaking VRAM. And it will just use it up. Now, this is accelerated by those Red Giant plugins that I use as they, especially at 4K, use a heck of a lot of VRAM. Now, I've reached out to... Red Giant support, I'm like, your all's requirements say you only need 4 gigs of VRAM, what's going on? They were less than helpful. They said that those, those requirements are doubled based on how many 4K monitors you have connected. So since I have two 4K monitors, that means that they need 8 gigs of VRAM, to which I called utter BS, because that's not how monitors work. Monitors don't just magically double your VRAM usage, and I even showed, sent them pictures. I was like, alright, I unplugged a monitor, relaunched program, took a picture, still using up on my VRAM doesn't help. And otherwise, they said that they have noticed specifically with Premiere, like a kind of leak, memory leak or something that's happening. And they're in talks with Adobe to fix it. But now I'm encountering and resolve. So it's not just that. But I was going to blame this again on NVIDIA drivers or on Red Giant. But 
I went to Level 1 Tech Headquarters. We, we shot a couple videos. Hopefully one of them will be up by now um, discussing Adobe Premiere. And we recreated one of my projects that was constantly crashing due to this GPU RAM usage. Completely separate Windows image and install, so it's not a consistent factor with me. Completely separate hardware. And we went with literally the best we could put together with regards to those kinds of resources. We're talking an AMD Threadripper 2990WX, the highest end consumer CPU you can get right now. And a Vega 64 graphics card, and then we added a second Vega 64 at some point. And the only configuration that we could create or recreate that did not have this exact same crash, and we only did one test render, so theoretically a second render could still encounter the crash, but that's besides the point, was with this Vega card, they have what's called high bandwidth memory cache capability, which means you can tell the VRAM to use up more of your system memory as VRAM and just switch between them, which Windows already tries to do as is, but on a much more limited and less speedy fashion. And so the only combination with that that we got to not crash was 128 gigs of system memory in the system. Now, I only have 64 gigs and I can't afford to upgrade to 128 anytime soon because my 64 gig, gig kit already cost me 900 bucks at the time that I purchased it. And then setting the Vega 64 graphics card to utilize 72 gigabytes of it. At which point, like we tried different steps leading up to that point. And it was only when we made that giant jump that it stopped using up all the VRAM. And when it did, it was able to exchange RAM and VRAM and talk to it quick enough and, I guess, effective, efficient enough that it didn't cause a crash. Otherwise, even with that same amount of system memory, just lower VRAM allocation and what have you, it would just keep crashing. That's absurd. This is completely hindering my workflow. Now, there's only a few, probably a small select percent of people who encounter this issue because super high-end production is done on a different class of hardware and mostly CPU bound. They don't even use a whole lot of GPU resources necessarily, although they obviously need VRAM, but they're also on quadros and things like that out of my reach at the moment. But I have confirmed that other people encounter this issue and even Red Giant admits that other people are encountering it. They just haven't figured out exactly why. So these are two issues that I'm pretty sure are Windows 10 based that are both with GPU resource allocation and how Windows 10 hands off VRAM back and forth with system memory. And I guess, guess maybe uh, with your page file, with your actual disk cache, since I, since video editing in that regard is pegging your system memory as well. But I think they're both to blame on Windows 10. And unfortunately, these kinds of configurations and setups can't really be recreated on another operating system. So... I have no way of like finding an alternative or really testing head to head if it's just Windows 10. But that's my theory and I have contacts that are trying to get this fixed, but I would love if anyone else had any contacts to apply a little bit more pressure. And I just wanted to share with you all because this is something that people come to me with with questions about all the time and I can't really help them fix and this is why. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too ranty, but also informative. Well, I mean, I do hope it was informative. And yeah, it's really hot. It's like 70 degrees in the middle of February. I'm not used to that. I'm having trouble adjusting. I want to go turn my air or my fan back on. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. I have a lot of streaming related vids videos going up at the moment. If you haven't seen them, check them out. I'm talking really fast. Contribute on Patreon. Subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I'll see you next time. Follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Fox. I apparently won't be streaming Apex Legends anytime soon, but I can stream some other stuff. I am enjoying Apex Legends, though. But yeah, come follow me or sub on Twitch. Bye.